the good thing is, is that people are at least coming to Yechezkel to ask him questions, but the message is not great. Chapter 14, Vayavohu. So some elders of Israel, respected men, elders, came to speak to Yishai, to Yechezkel, excuse me, and they sat in front of him. God appeared to me. Not surprisingly, Ben Adam, mortal man, mortal man, you. These men, they've turned their thoughts to idols. They set their minds upon sin, which they've stumbled. Should I respond to their query? Should I respond to their question? It seems a little unfair. They look like they're coming to God, but are they coming to God just to hear what God says? They want to know what God says. They're, they're already sinners. They know what they're going to do, irrespective of the answer. So tell the people, anyone from the house of Israel who turns to idols and sets their mind on sin and they've stumbled, they've made mistakes and comes to my prophet, I will respond to them as they're responded to by their idols, by their fetishes. That is to say, I will not respond to them. Laman tifos et beit Yisrael belibam asher nazoru me'alai begulehem kulam. And so I will hold the house of Israel to account for their thoughts because they have all been estranged from me. They've moved from me to their idols, to their mediums, to different ways of attempting to communicate with God. The, the, think back all the way to the Egel Azav. These are the gods who took you out of the land of Egypt, whether that's supposed to be understood uh, literally or however it is. They're not turning towards me. Verse 6. So tell the house of Israel, turn back from your fetishes, from your idols, and turn towards me. Repent. Move away from your abominations. Similar verse like we had before. So tell everybody in Israel and the strangers who dwell amongst the Israel who turn from me and go to their idols and their fetishes and sin. And then they go to the prophet and inquire. I will respond directly. You're not going to want to see my response. I will set my face towards this person. And I will right they're going to they're going to they're going to suffer i'm going to turn that into a curse into a pejorative a byword and they will be cut off from the people of israel and as we've seen many chapters then they will know that i am god continuing verse 9 and as we've seen many chapters then they will know that i am god continuing verse 9 va navi ki futed fi diber davar ni adonai piteti oto et navi ha hu vni teti et jadi ala vishmadativ mi toch ami israel here we have a difficult verse and the prophet who is seduced and speaks to or words that are not correct, like in the last chapter, shalom vi'en shalom, the prophets say there's going to be peace, they're not. I am the one who seduced this prophet. Very difficult concept. We know, uh, we see Mitzrayim, God hardens the heart of Paro. We saw it uh, with, uh, we saw it in a sense with um, Shlomo son Rechavam, when he was asked whether or not he would t- remove the taxes, and God said, uh, God uh, there says, I, I seduced him to, to, to say the wrong answer. Because God was upset at Shlomo and the kingdom was going to be cut off. We'll see it also with, with, with King David. It's a difficult concept to think about, certainly. Uh, here, it's, it's not as difficult because God is sort of taking sinners and making them into uh, continuing in their sin. And it's almost as if, right, their free choice has been taken away. Somebody who sins the first time, it's much easier to sin the second time. It's not the same thing. It's much easier to do. So here, uh, the, the, the idea of God seducing them, God leading them down the wrong path, it's a difficult one. Uh, but uh, at least uh, something to think about and consider. So that person, who in a sense, almost like, yeah, they have an addiction. They've been seduced into that path. God says, I'll stretch out my hand to destroy that quote-unquote prophet from among my people. And they will bear their punishment. The, right? The punishment of the inquirer and the punishment of the prophet will be the same. It's a little unfair to those asking. Usually the leadership is more problematic, but nevertheless. Why am I doing this? So they will not defile themselves. They will not stray. They will not turn away from me, but they will remain 
loyal to me forever. Second prophecy, verse 12. So if, uh, if a, 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 a town, a land sins against me, uh, and then I I hit back. I stretch out my hands against it. I break its staffs of bread. Right there's a famine, and humans are suffering, and animals are suffering. Even if these three great men, Noah, Daniel, and Eov, are there. Their righteousness would only save themselves, says God. Think about stone, right? The destruction of stone. If there were 10 righteous individuals, stone would have been saved. There weren't. Avram is able, because presumably his righteousness is able to save his nephew Lot. But these three people, things have gotten so bad. These three people, we know Noah, which is a you know, good analogy as well. Noah doesn't even try to save anybody else, but at least his family is saved because he listens. We know who Eov is, Eov, who's judged unjustly. The book of Job, who was a wonderful person, a Yireh Hashem, described beautifully by God and then suffers terribly, even a great person like him. And then Daniel, we don't know who this Daniel is. Easiest thing to say is it's Daniel. The Daniel is a, um, uh, a book we'll read towards the end of Ketuvim, one of the people who were exiled with Yechonia, Melchi Yudad, above in the year 597. It's difficult to say that this would be Daniel because Yechezkel and Daniel are contemporary, so people know who Daniel is. So it's hard, right? We're talking about people from the past, people of legend, people of lore. So it's not exactly clear who this Daniel is, but these three righteous men, they couldn't save society. That's how bad the society is. That's how my punishment is going to happen. If I was to send wild beasts to roam the land and depopulate, it will become desolate. And nobody would be able to go there because it was so dangerous. The lions, the tigers, the bears. Even if these three men were in that, that, uh, that type of situation, they wouldn't be able to save their children, their sons or daughters. Only they would be saved. The land would become desolate. So they're less than the Noah of the Tanakh, of the Torah whose family is able to be saved. You can say they're saved there because of the repopulation of the earth in the story of the Torah. But but they the society is so bad. There's a sword that's sweeping through the land and it will cut off human and animals. And again, these three men are there. Any of them, all of them. Again, only they would survive. They wouldn't be able. Society is so corrupt. If I send pestilence upon the land, pouring out my fury. Even if, again, Noach, Daniel, Eov, these three great men are there, their kids would not be saved. Only they, through their own righteousness, would be able to be saved. Interesting, we don't mention Avraham. Avraham is able to save at least uh, Lot. Avraham is, argues with God, and there, this is making it worse than still. Continue verse 20. God says, how much less can anybody escape? That's only if it was one, really, if it was pestilence or if it was the sword or if it was a famine. But now what if they're all together? All these terrible punishments, the sword, the famine, the wild beast, the pestilence is going to cut off all human and animals. And there are going to be a few survivors, a few left, some sons and daughters who will remain alive, and they're going to come to you. And when they And when you see their PTSD, when you see the difficulty, the struggles, and you understand the disaster that I brought on Jerusalem. And you will be consoled through them when you see their ways and their deeds and realize that not without cause did I do all of this, says God. So seemingly these people who survive, they themselves are terrible sinners because how will, how, how will that be a proof to Yechezkel, 
that uh, that they deserved it, unless they themselves are problematic, troublesome people, may not even be their fault. They might have been raised in such a terrible situation. That's the way they turned out. So we have a very difficult chapter, intriguing chapter. Even the great Noah couldn't save anybody else. Even the great Eov couldn't save anybody else. Think of the end of the book of Eov. If you don't know, Eov, uh, his children are killed in the first chapter. His wealth is taken away. But in the last chapter, he has sons and daughters. He through his righteousness, through the, the the accepting of God's suffering, through his speaking of truth to God, his, his uh, beautiful life, whatever it means, is restored. Uh, even they would not be able to help the other members of B'nai Yisrael when the full rage of God, all four of the terrible punishments, come out towards Yerushalayim.